Hi everyone, it's Nicole, and today we are going to make seared scallops. Scallops are one of those things that are really not that hard when you get the technique down. They're easy to mess up, but once, you, once I show you the way of how to get them perfectly crispy and yummy and bring out the flavors in them, you are going to love them. I'm gonna show you how to do that, and you're gonna be able to get it, and you're gonna love them too, and see the natural sweetness in this yummy protein. When I was thinking about what to pair the scallops with, sometimes I like to do, there's all different preparations, but sometimes I'll like, like olive topping out on top, but today I wanted to utilize some of the fresh summer produce that's still in season, and some of it from our own garden. And right now in summer, some of my favorite things are corn, tomatoes, and basil, all pictured here. And I'm going to do a little sweet summer corn with some roasted tomatoes, which will bring out the caramelized, yummy flavor of those tomatoes, and a little crispy pancetta, a little bit of basil on top, and it is going to be delicious. Now, you might ask how that's going to fare for the little ones, because not all little ones like scallops. Some of my um, three boys might actually try the scallops, but other ones might not, and that's okay, because if they don't want the scallops, they can have the corn with the tomato sauce that we're going to make with some pasta, with some rice, or anything like that. So it's still the same concept of adultify where you're making, you're not making two separate things, you're making one thing. And I know that my kiddos enjoy corn, they enjoy tomatoes, so hopefully yours do too. We're going to take our corn. I have six ears of corn here. And we're gonna just put it in our pot and boil the water. Now, I'm using my little Winnie the Pooh. It's another little thing about me. I love Winnie the Pooh. So, Winnie the Pooh's gonna help us in our cooking today. I'm gonna take the lid off. I have boiling water here that I have salted, and we're just gonna drop our corn in. The corn only needs to cook for about six to eight minutes. So one of the things that I really do when I'm cooking in the kitchen without the cameras rolling, I'll try to incorporate a little bit for you guys too, but I love to listen to my music when I'm cooking and I even dance a lot of times. So I'll just be chopping, listening to music and dancing. It is my zen. It's relaxing to me and it's what I, what I love and what makes me feel the most comfort and like I'm in the right place for me. And like, I feel like myself best when I'm doing that. So those are some things that I love. Tomatoes, I like a serrated knife because it cuts them nicely, as opposed to my regular standard chef knife that I use to dice everything else that you'll see. So I am going to take the tops off the tomatoes. And then I don't need to, I just want to um, roast them a little bit. So I'm just gonna quarter them for the ones that are bigger in size. And for the ones um, that are smaller, like the little cherry tomatoes, I'm just gonna leave those whole. I'll just take the tops off and then leave them whole. This one looks nice. Look at that tomato. You guys see? Yeah, we're chopping tomatoes. Okay. So we have our tomatoes on our sheet pan here. And we're gonna take a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. So one thing I wanna share with you is that there are different styles of garlic for different dishes. So, and the same goes for onion. So the, the garlic that I'm going to do today is I'm just going to smash the garlic and I'll show you that in a second. But in the future videos, you will see me mince some garlic, like finely minced. You will see me slice some garlic really, really thin, like Goodfellas style. And 
they all have different reasons and they all actually, believe it or not, have different tastes, even though it's the same garlic, but the flavor comes through different ways. So that's a really good tip that I wanna share with you guys. So for today's garlic, we're just gonna get our aggressions out, take our little fist and take our knife and smash the garlic, that's it. And then the paper comes right off and you have your garlic here. And then you could take like this little piece at the edge you can take that and just like slice it off and then just take the whole thing and throw it on your sheet pan like that just throw a couple so we're going to do a couple more just like that and what's going to happen is as the tomatoes roast that garlic's going to roast and that is going to taste delicious in our corn and tomato and basil and pancetta um, dish that we're going to make to put the scallops underneath I said to you in my last zucchini flower video, if you haven't seen that, go check it out. But I really, really like a lot of garlic. So right now I have about, I wanna say like six or seven, and honestly with roasted garlic, I'm interrupting myself for a second, but with roasted garlic, you can never get enough. So I really like, I put probably about six or seven cloves of garlic in there. You know what? Let's make it an even eight cloves of garlic in there with the tomatoes. And as it roasts, it'll give it that nice garlicky, roasty flavor. And then we'll also have them afterwards, like I said, to add into our dish, so. I cut a shallot just like I cut a regular onion. Leave this part intact, the root. And I take my knife, just take the back end off, and then we use our knife to Go alongside the shallot. One. It looks like one, but really you open them and there's like two pieces to it. So that's good because the more the merrier. Knife, the sharp point, I go down the middle and then I go horizontally. You should be able to get a nice, be able to get a nice um, mince. So. onions make my eyes burn and give me tears and stuff and uh, I once Amazoned a pair of those onion goggles that are marketed for that reason they didn't work so I just grin and bear it now these days but um, I do find that shallots that happens a lot less than with a regular yellow onion as well so right now I am not teary-eyed that's what they look like Nice and roasty. I want to take our corn and cut all the corn kernels off of it. So the way we do this is we hold it like this and we just take our knife Another thing that I love that you will see hopefully the more you watch me is my love of fresh herbs they just smell delicious and they add so much flavor especially in the summer when they're in season but even when they're not um, I, I like to preferably use in season but even over the winter I will buy some fresh basil fresh thyme fresh parsley it just tastes so much better when you know it was homegrown but there's still a place for it all year long and chopping my fresh Basil. Basil is also one of those things that, like I said with the garlic, um, sometimes I'll mince it thin, sometimes I'll julienne it, which is a fancy term for little ribbons. And then other times I'll just take it like with my sauce and stuff and just like rip it, you know, like nice little tears of the basil. Um, so I do different things depending on what I'm making give a fine shot to. Here's 
my fresh basil. That's the amount that I'm using. Chetta is gonna taste really, really nice with the corn and all those flavors. So I've already been preheating my pan, so it's nice and hot. So when we put this pancetta in, it's gonna make a nice little sizzle. Let's see, Let's see if we can hear it. Oh, there it goes. There's that sound that we like to hear. Delicious. And we're gonna just leave it to get all nice and brown and crispy. The pancetta is going to give this dish a nice little salty, crispy, smoky element. Eight minutes right now. So, just do one side and then it's easy to just remove. There it is, that's what it looks like. Now we're ready to put everything together. So that's the exciting part when we get to put it all together. So we're going to take about a tablespoon of butter and then an equal amount of extra virgin olive oil. The butter has a high smoking point. So what that means is that it burns quickly. So the olive oil also has a higher smoking point than other more neutral oils, but in this case, it's a lower smoking point than the butter, so it balances it out and it doesn't let the butter burn as quickly. Plus, it's also good for flavor. I like the mixture of the flavor of the olive oil and the butter together. So we're going to let that melt, and as it is melting and getting a little bit hot, it's getting all nice and bubbly. It's just, I love the way that sounds and looks, that it's ready for our shallots. So let's get ready for the sizzle. Ready for this as a one, two. Ah, here we go. It's like music. <laughs> you have to have fun with the cooking. You have to have fun. I mean, luckily, this is what I love. This is my passion in life. This is my favorite thing to do. And I'm so happy to finally get the courage to share it all with everyone. But um, for those who really are just dabbling, don't necessarily love it so much. I hope that some of my videos can show you how to see the joy and how to see the fun in it and how to make it fun, you know, by the sounds, the smells, the, the little musical renditions I just did for you. So our shallots, we just want to get them a little translucent so they're not so... Um, Translucent, you probably hear that all the time. You probably hear every food person say to cook the onions until they're translucent. And you're like, what the heck does that even mean? So really what it means is that obviously when you first dice them, they kind of like a little hard. Translucent is just when they get a little bit more soft. Go in a little bit of white, oh, it smells so good. A little bit of white wine. Okay, so here we have Pinot Grigio. And I think we're gonna do about a quarter cup. Oh, hear that sizzle? Sizzle! So good, so good. Mm. Let it reduce. It takes a little bit of time, but you'll be able to move it and just tell that it is reduced. See, you can tell it has reduced from when I put it in. We're going to add our fresh corn. along the way. So now that we have our corn in there, we're going to do a little bit of salt and pepper. We are going to take our nice roasted caramelized home garden grown tomatoes and roasted garlic and add that in. Looks and smells delicious. We're going to add that yummy pancetta back in. With our fresh basil. Look at that. Look at all these colors and flavors. It is like summer in a pan. We have a little freshly grated Parmesan. I think it's gonna be really, really delicious. I want the Parmesan in there. If you want to leave it out, feel free to leave it out. But I think the nuttiness of it and the way it melts into it 
is going to be really, really delicious. The final piece of the puzzle, the piece de resistance, we're gonna lower the heat and we're going to add in just a little touch of heavy cream. Um, let's see, it's probably about a quarter cup of heavy cream. Mm, look at that. Delicious. So luscious. We always wanna do a little taste test. I always taste as I go along, just to make sure that it's good and I can change anything that I wanna change. So let's see. Mmm, 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 mmm. That is exactly how I imagined it and how I wanted it. It is so good. The hubby's gotta give it a try. How is that? Amazing. What do you think, what do you think? Thumbs up? I think it's amazing. So now we have our scallops, the star of the show. What we do with the scallops, they have this, it's called a muscle. Can you see that? It's a little muscle. And you don't wanna eat it. It's, it's too tough and chewy, but it's very easy to take off. So if your scallops have this, you simply just grab it and pull. That's it. As I take the muscle off, I am laying them on a paper towel. Muscles have a lot of moisture and you want them to be nice and dry when you sear them so that they get that nice, crispy, yummy taste that we all love. We're going to do the same thing that we did layering the paper towel on the bottom and just put another paper towel on top and pat those scallops. Pat, 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 pat. So we can make sure they're nice and dry. So gentle with them because they are delicate. Scallops, they don't need a lot, especially since we have that yummy, yummy corn to put them over and that's gonna provide a lot of the flavor. So for these scallops, it's gonna be really simple and straightforward and they have, like I said, a natural sweetness. So all we are going to add to these scallops is just a little bit of salt and pepper. So here we go, a little scrunch of salt. I use kosher salt. I like it because I can grab it and I keep it in this nice little mason jar and there are other salts that I will use, finishing salts, flaky salts, Himalayan salts. But for my everyday cooking, I use kosher salt. So a little salt, a little bit of black pepper. <clears throat> we do this on both sides. They were on one side, right? Life is too short to be having one side of flavor. Flavor both sides. The best vessel, I think, for scallops that you cannot go wrong is a nice solid cast iron pan. So that gives it the best tear, in my opinion, and all the times I've tried making scallops, and that is what I love. A tablespoon of butter and a little bit of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Now, sometimes when I do scallops, I don't do the butter. Like when I'm going on one of my kicks or I'm being more health conscious or for some people who are dairy free and cannot have butter, leave out the butter. The extra virgin olive oil, it's good enough and it'll give it a nice flavor. I do think butter adds a little extra flavor and I have it in our corn. So I'm also adding it here to stir the scallops in. So now our pan is nice and hot. I can tell by the way my butter's sizzling and I'm going to take our scallops and I'm going to put them season side down. Let's see here. Okay, nice little sizzle. And now the thing about these scallops is you do not want to touch them. They don't need very long. They only need about two to three minutes per side. If you overcook them, they will be rubbery. So don't overcook them. Two to three minutes per side, but for the duration that they're in there, for those two to three minutes, you do not touch them. No, 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 don't touch. Just let them do their thing. Let them get nice and crispy on one side. And then we will put them, they'll have a nice crust, and we'll cook them on the other side. Now, as promised, we're gonna season the other side of our scallops. Okay, 
nice and seasoned. We like a lot of flavor, flavor. Flavor, flavor. This is what I do. This is really what I do, guys. When the camera's not rolling, you can ask my husband. This is really actually what I do. So, now I'm giving it to you guys. <laughs> Hope you like it. I like tongs for the flipping of the scallops. That's a good tool to use. If you don't have a nice good pair of tongs, go out and get yourself a pair because they are one of the most handy kitchen utensils. So we have about a dozen scallops here. So it depends how hungry of a person you are. I think about four to five would be a serving, but for my husband and I, we'll probably have six each. Maybe the kids might try one. Not sure, not sure. I think Luca, he's the more adventurous eater and he says that he'll try one. So we'll see how that goes. But Antonio and Johnny, I don't know. They might be having theirs with some pasta. We're not disturbing our scallops right now. Notice, it's really tempting to go and peek and see what's going on in there. Hey, Mr. Scallop, what's going on under that? We are not going to peek because sometimes the best things come to those who wait, right? So we're gonna have an exercise of patience here and wait until the right time to turn our scallops. You get them sizzling. They're like speaking a little language to us. They're telling us, don't peek. I think it might be time. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look, look, look. Look, ooh, that looks delicious. And worth the reveal and the wait. They look perfect, guys. Perfect. Not peeking is worth the wait because all of that caramelization and those brown bits that we've achieved by letting them do their thing in the cast iron, that is all flavor. And it's gonna be so good for your taste buds and you're gonna love every minute of it. The thing that you can do is you can butter baste your scallops. I'll show you this technique in a um, steak video that I plan to do soon. Now, this is, we're going to remove our scallops. It's been about, three minutes on the other side. And you know that they're done because they easily release. They don't get stuck to the pan. They release nicely. They got that nice caramelization. Here are, look at how beautiful guys. Look at how beautiful, see that crispiness? Oh, I cannot wait to eat these. So, so, the plating. We're going to take some of that nice, yummy corn. So this is our finished dish. So good. Oh, I cannot wait to taste this. So here goes. Little piece of scallop, a lot of that nice corn mixture, and here we go. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That is absolutely delicious. Mmm. The sweetness of the scallop marries perfectly with the sweetness of the corn, the smokiness of the pancetta, the little bit of cream, the way it coats your mouth. It is, and my son's in the background playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star while we taste. So this is mom life. So this is real guys. So I'm doing cooking videos, but real things will happen. So, but anyway, this is, if you taste the scallop alone, Daddy. you really taste the sweetness of the scallop. And then that corn, it just adds, it just adds to it. It gives it, and you have the different textures. You have the yummy roasted tomatoes, the smokiness, the sweetness, the saltiness. Mm. 
I hope you try this. I try both, right? Yeah, and this is our adventurous little guy. And he offered to try both things. So here you go. So Luca, first try the corn, and then I'll give you a piece of scallop. Let's see. You tell me what you think. <coughs> this has all flavors that you like in there. <coughs> so good. How delicious is it? Let's say that now one? the scallop. Wait. The real corn. Ready? It's just so good. And is that you like it? <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at him. Wow, see? So he likes the scallop. And I never knew that he liked scallops before. So this is great. Can you Him either. Him, Him either. Mommy. See? Yeah. So here is Johnny. Johnny, look at the camera. And Johnny's gonna have, well first, yeah, look. First try the, um, the phone. <laughs> What do you think? Is it good? Okay. Now, Johnny's going to try the scallop. And this is Johnny's first time trying scallops. Luca's giving me the thumbs up in the background, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You like the scallop? Look! So I have two little guys that I just found out like scallops, too! And I never knew. So if you don't try things with your kids, you will never know if they like it. So I'm excited now because now when I make scallops, I can just make it for my boys, too. And they're going to eat it. And it's a healthy, yummy protein option. Like and follow for more. And if you have any questions, you can write them down below in the comments and I will get back to you if you want to make this and have any questions about it. So like and subscribe and hopefully see you again in the next video. Bye. Thanks for watching.